first of all, you know, each news channel, not just yours, is constantly putting out this rhetoric that Islam is a religion of peace, right? I don't believe that to be true, because if you read the Quran and the Hadith, it is the direct commandment of the Prophet Muhammad for them to go to all these countries, set themselves up, and turn the countries into Islamic states, right? Now, that's basically what's going on here. And we are the infidel, and the Prophet Muhammad tells them have no, no dealings with them. That's why there's no integration, Peter. So I'm not talking out of my backside here. Now, also, my last point, thank you for letting me speak, really. The police won't engage, engage with these rioters and these protesters because they're afraid of kicking off a civil war. Brendan, you're very welcome to Talk TV. What point would you like to make this morning? There's a few, actually. First of all, I can't believe um, you, that your guest was calling for a ceasefire. A ceasefire means that Hamas get away with it. The only people in the world who uh, who, uh, who can sort this out are the Israelis, because they're the only ones who have the, um, the ability, the function and the necessity to wipe this lot off the face of the earth. Is, that, that, is that the only solution, Brandon, completely get rid of Hamas? I just wonder how you do that. Um, Hamas, what's the, what's the stated aim of Hamas? To kill every yeah. Jew in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. So the Jews have therefore have got an option. They either let them kill them or they kill them. Now, the way you kill them, unfortunately, is you go in there with armour and you go in there with tanks and you go in there with infantry and aircraft and you wipe them out. Now, um, <clears throat> they told the, the, the uh, innocent people who live in, Pal um, out in Gaza to get out of it, move south. Who stopped them going south? Hamas. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. they're not human shields. They don't care about their own people. They do not care. Hamas do not care about their own people. They want their own people to be killed. And they robbed them. Yeah. And the, yeah. Other, the other thing that um, it, 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 this hasn't been mentioned, if the same amount of casualties as a ratio of population were inflicted on us, we'd have lost 10,000 people. Mm. If the same ratio of casualties were inflicted on, inflicted on America, they'd have lost 50,000 people. In the, So how, how, do you, how do you negotiate with these people? You can't. Just, you cannot negotiate can't. with them. You so can't negotiate your, your with friend, them. Your, your, coll your colleague was on there, uh, Claire, saying there should be a ceasefire. Yeah, yeah, after Hamas have been wiped out. The but, but can't, I mean, let, let me just, uh, Brandon, I basically agree with you, but let me just prove that a little bit. How do you wipe Hamas out? You cannot kill every last Hamas supporter. You cannot kill every single person because the no, problem you, is, you, as, you, as has often been the case, you kill or imprison people and then that radicalises other people who say, well, this has been done to our community, therefore we're going to take up arms and we're going to be terrorists. It's always happened. Well, it, it does, but um, it, it, there's no, there, there isn't any other solution. <laughs> you know, it's a bit that like, we're using the word solution. Ah, well, I know what you mean, but but it's, a, it's it, 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 I know I, you, yeah. There's no there's no ill intent there, Brandon. It's a very very interesting one, Brandon. What do you think happens now? Because we've seen that we've seen that escalation, I should say, overnight. Well, I, obviously, the, 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 they're not going to. The, the Israeli army aren't going to tell the world what they're going to do. Yeah. What they're doing, they, they'll have a plan. Uh, the, 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 I know Mossad supposedly let them down and didn't see this coming, but they'll know where where the tunnels are. They'll know where the the, the main um, the concentrations of these people are, which probably, unfortunately, are under hospitals or yes. under schools, yes. which is what part of their plan. So they'll go and get them. Now, if you, I believe uh, on the on the the, the 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 ones that launched the attack two three weeks ago. They killed about 15, 1,600 of them. They, mm. they got they got all that most of that lot. The Israelis got, and there can't be that many left. You know, there may be people who support them. Yes, there's lots of people who support them. But how many people are willing to put their head above the parapet, say, "I'm from Hamas," and, I'm, and, and when they, when all these other stuffs come the other way from very, um, very um, well armed Israelis who know what they're doing. And the thing about Netanyahu, by the way, that, that your, again, your colleague, you know, his uh, his brother got, he was the only one killed on the raid on Entebbe. He led the raid on Entebbe. I think I did know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and often, often political leaders have a... The family history of defending yeah. Israel.
often these political leaders, Brendan, as you correctly say, often these political leaders have uh, some sort of emotional connection themselves. Thank you for that. Jill is in Cornwall and has given me a ring on 0344 499 1000. Um, Jill, I think you want to talk about these marches that have been on, these pro-Palestinian uh, marches that have been happening in many parts of the UK. Hundreds of thousands uh, of people seem to have been involved. I'm not sure of the actual numbers, but certainly some of the pictures I saw from London yesterday, there seemed to be quite a lot of people there. What do you make of this, Jill? Well, it bothers me enormously, um, simply because, A, for a start, our borders are so wide open, you could more or less go over and pick these people up yourself. We don't know who's crossing the channel. You can bet your life there will be, there will be troublemakers amongst those coming across. I'm not saying all of them are, but there will be. Um, and and if, that, if that unrest comes into this country with other people and, and then creates situations in this country, um, which it appears to be doing, um, then, yes, I think we've got really good, big problems. There will, there will be a lot of people born in this country on those marches as well, though. I, I agree. I agree with you. But I, I just feel a little bit irritated with the fact that Rishi says... Uh, in front of the cameras that he's going to protect the people of Israel in this country and everything else. He can't protect us, let, let alone the Israelis. So when you um, see... We, so, well, we don't know who's coming in. Well, sorry, we to, sorry to interrupt you, Jill. I just want to ask you one final question. When you see yeah. those marches, that makes you feel uneasy. Does it make you feel unsafe? It does in a way because um, the, the police don't appear to be able to do anything about it. Certainly those people shouting jihad and so on. But for me, there's another point here. It's an uncomfortable point, Jill, and you may disagree with me, and please tell me if you do. But at the same time, we allow people to congregate. We allow people to disagree with us. I'm not defending anybody shouting jihad. I'm not defending anybody who has any sympathy, even a smidgen of sympathy whatsoever for Hamas. They're terrorists. They're horrible people. But there are people on those marches. There's a guy I spoke to yesterday, Abdul, really interesting guy, who was on the march and was horrified by some of the stuff that was saying. People do have a right to protest, which they don't have in Gaza, they don't have in Iran, and maybe that's actually a, perhaps an uncomfortable part of our democracy, but it makes us a democratic state. Uh, there is one one thing. I, I, I'm not against protest. I mean, the Countryside March was a huge, great thing. Sure. I, I'm, not, I'm not against people um, wanting to say what they want to say, but I am against, I am against a situation where we know that this group of uh, fighters, this mass group, are terrorists. We know that they are. We know that what they've done. And, and I am not prepared to allow people to support that and shout about it and make everyone in this country feel uncomfortable because we object to that type of protest. Great, great, I, great, can, sorry, make your final more, point, Jill, quickly. Yeah. They, they can march up and down and wave their flags and the rest of it, like everyone else who's got a protest in this country. But once you start supporting yeah. the, the the criminals of this well, the, world... The, the, poli the police, we just, to, we the police to... just need to do their job, Jill. You're absolutely right. You've, you make some really, really good points. And the police just need to do their job. Legitimate protest, fine. Jill and I are on the same page about that. If you're supporting Hamas, no thank you. Uh, get out of our country, please. Matthew, you're very welcome to the programme for the first time. Uh, whereabouts are you in Israel and uh, what would you like to tell us today? Uh, I live in uh, a place called uh, uh, Karne Shomron. It's, uh, it's, it's what many people might call the uh, occupied territories. <laughs> okay. Uh, and and are, are, you, are you safe? Are your family safe? No one's safe. That's okay. the thing. I mean, uh, the, 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 no one in Israel is safe. It, it went from a normal day to living in the blitz overnight in a split of a in like in, in a blink of an eye it was the most surreal thing ever my, both my sons are uh, are literally on the front lines of combat right now they're in the idf yeah mm -hmm. and uh, my, my my older son was supposed to get married on wednesday last week but uh, that that wasn't g g uh, gonna be possible so they he arranged a a field wedding, like literally in a field. We, we uh, in, in, in an army base, they set up a, like a temporary army base, and we had the wedding there. And he got married there on Wednesday. Congratulations to him, my goodness. Thank you. Actually, no, we, we actually did that a couple of days, days early on Monday. But okay. like, I would like to re really address what it's like here from, from a ground... Yes, please, please do. Tell thing. us, yeah. So, firstly, you know, the idea that uh, Israel is indiscriminately bombing... Gaza is is nonsense, and it's uh, uh, offensive nonsense at that. It's uh, if we wanted to wipe out Gaza, we could do it in about forty five minutes. 
with one bomb. Yeah, so nuclear weapons, power. which Israel has, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, it, 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 I, and look, from my perspective, like, uh, it would benefit me personally to, uh, on, on the short term, but I think it would be a, a terrible thing to do. Right. I guess, like, honestly, my, my kids are literally in the front lines of combat. Yes. Right. And so I would rather them not be there. But it's something that we do not do not have a choice about. I really would like your listeners to understand what's going on is not about revenge. It's, I mean, there is revenge and there is anger going on, obviously, but it's not about that. It's about survival. Right. We, we the, these are these people have said they've always wanted to do this to us. They well, want they to destroy you. Them. They want you and they your whole family and everyone you know to die because you're because you're citizens of Israel. No, because we're Jews. It's not citizens of Israel, and they hate citizens of Israel because citizens of Israel are the major, are majority Jews. But it, it, and that's it. That's the bottom line. What it really boils down to is Jew hatred, and it's always been about Jew hatred. You know, the idea that uh, it's about 75 years of uh, oppression and occupation... You know, Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2005, yeah, yeah. that's nearly 20 years ago, yeah. to create an independent state. Instantly they voted uh, uh, Hamas into power. That, uh, we can go into that, you know, how, how, you know, how that happened. Yeah, well, it was the free and fair election, all the rest of it. But, but there, is, there is support for Hamas. And I, I always find this, when people talk about terrorist groups, they always say, oh, there's no real support for them. There is some support. There are many people who hate Hamas in Gaza, as you know far better than I do. But there are people who support them, and there are people who believe what they are doing, what Hamas uh, terrorists are doing is right. Right, and the, the reason they, they believe that is because they've been dripped this poison into their heads. For, and uh, I think most, most Muslims around the world have been dripped this poison in their head that, that, uh, uh, to hate Jews, right, to hate Israel. They say it in, in, a, in a more kosher way, saying let's hate Israel, but no, it's, it's to hate Jews, right? In 1948, there was a two-state solution, and the, uh, the Jews said, yes, fine, let's live together, right? And the Arabs said no, and they went to war and they lost the war. Uh, yeah, the, 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 there's a narrative that there was a uh, ethnic cleansing of Arabs. We put peace pro, uh, proposals down time and time again. Can, can no I ask you, Matthew, just just on that yeah. point, you've, you've identified a really interesting point, which we're actually going to discuss a little bit later on the programme, and that is about you know, saying you're anti-Israel but actually being anti-Jewish. And it's not just that point, but it's the point that there are many on the left who would never, not everybody, but there are many on the left in this country who would never think for a second to call a black person the N-word. God forbid anybody should ever do that. Who right. would never think for a second to criticise a gay person, a trans person, uh, a, a whatever. But for some reason, being anti-Israel and being a little bit anti-Semitic, or maybe a lot anti-Semitic, is somehow okay in regard to what they think. Why is that, do you think? Well, I think, I think human beings have a propensity towards uh, hating one, and, one another. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's a negative trait that is in, inbuilt to us, and, we, and people need a permissible way to do that. And, and I think it's been branded as a, uh, as a noble fight against an oppressor. But that's what anti-Semitism has always been. Mm. Anti-Semitism, the, the primary form of anti-Semitism throughout time is, is something called blood libels that are saying Jews are doing something despicable, let's destroy them. Mm. And, and, and it's the same as it was a couple hundred years ago when it said Jews were using Christian baby blood in their religious yeah. practice on Passover. It's the same now. It's exactly the same. The allegations against Israel are completely without any merit whatsoever. I think Israel's mistake was, for many years, they treated them as to, uh, because they were without merit, to just ignore them. And because they did that, they've lost the, over the over a period of about 30 years, they lost the media battle. So you have all these people... But I mean, you, you, you can't, I mean it, it, it is not, nonetheless the case, Matthew, just finally, it yeah. is nonetheless the case that, I, I mean, there are innocent civilians in Gaza suffering because of, because of the actions of Israel. Because of the actions of Hamas, yes, but also because of the actions of Israel. Yeah, I mean, Israel yeah. is not entirely innocent in this. Well, you know, it's, it, you know what do you think uh, uh, Dresden looked like in World War II mm. or, or Hiroshima? This is what war looks like. War is disgusting. War is where innocent people get killed, where people become homeless, people become made. It's the worst thing in the world. We should always avoid war uh, for, for good reason. Because it, 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 if you look on in horror, and again, I think the people protesting, calling for ceasefire, are genuinely good, decent people mostly, right? I really, really do. Because you look at it and your heart bleeds. You don't want this to happen, right? Nobody wants this to happen. But you know, the, the, uh, the reason that they don't have water in Gaza, because they, they dug up the 
billions and billions of uh, euros of uh, of water pipes to make, make missiles out yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's true, Marfi. They to find missiles out of I, I had to go to a shelter a couple of times this week, right? Yeah. Uh, to be, they have power to do that. They don't have power to feed the hospitals. Mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's disgusting. It is disgusting. It's, Marfi, we've got to leave it there, but listen, I really want you to ring me again. Much. I want you to update me on how things are going. And uh, please send your son my, uh, my, my congratulations on his marriage as well. Fascinating call there from Matthew. Let's talk to Mark in Greenwich in London, who's given me a call at 0344 499 1000. Mark, you're very welcome to the programme. What would you like to say? Hello, Peter. Thanks for taking the call. Um, I'm absolutely amazed about the comments uh, regarding Israel and complying with um, uh, international uh, war crimes. Uh, that would be OK if we were applying them to warring nation states. Um, Hamas is a terror rogue state and those rules cannot apply to Hamas. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed at some of the attitude uh, in the media, particularly the BBC recently, that seem to be calling Israel almost to be fighting this war with one hand tied behind its back. The people of Gaza elected Hamas uh, 20 years ago and while I don't believe that all of them support what Hamas are doing, they have had 20 years to rise up, as other countries have done, and oust them. They could have lobbied for uh, aid and support from the West. We saw how the Eastern Bloc countries, the former so uh, Soviet bloc, uh, was ended. They chose not to. Now, I really am so frustrated how Israel are going out of their way to give time and warning to the people of Gaza to let them know to go to a place of safety. I, I think it's a really good point, Mark, and actually Matthew, who was in Israel, or he is in Israel earlier on, said, look, if they wanted to destroy Gaza, they could use a nuclear weapon and do it on an hour. That's not Absolutely. what they've chosen to do. Absolutely. Do, do you know what, Peter? Honestly, I know, this is, I know people hark back to the Second World War, and it is a cliche, but can you imagine if we're going to send the dam busters and we're going to say to the German forces... You better get some people away from the dams because there might be a bit of flooding and there may be a bit of collateral damage. If people are concerned about the welfare of the people in Gaza and they're, and they're not convinced about this terrible regime of Hamas and they think that it's all Israeli propaganda, remember the Manchester bombings. Remember Lee Rigby being beheaded on a street around uh, just not far from where I live. Remember the 77 bombings. This is the ideology that Israel is fighting against. We've seen it on our own streets. We've seen it. It's not propaganda. And Israel are taking the brunt for what could eventually descend upon us all. Mark, I know this is your first call to the station. Do not make it your last. You make a lot of very, very good points there. And Mark is yet another new caller that we're talking to today. We're very grateful to the people who ring in more often or have been on before or whatever. Of course we are, but we've had a number of new callers, including Mark. So thank you to him. Can't disagree with a word of that. Ray is in London and wants to give us a, a, a shout as well. Um, Ray, I think it's maybe the marches that you wanted to talk about. Is that correct? Well, it is, um, uh, uh, Peter, it's um, a bit about the marches. Um, firstly, congratulations on your new appointment as... Um, Thank you. Um, that's that's very, very kind. And, and and obviously for being a brilliant political um, top man there. Oh, so thanks. That's, that's very kind, Ray. No, uh, and it, enough it, about it, me. What's, what's, your, what's your point? No, I know. I, I had to say that, though. <laughs> Um, before I talk about the marches, I, I hope you don't mind me uh, talking about Claire Muldoon and what she said about um, uh, all people's lives. She cares for all, all life, and, yeah. and we've all got to agree with that. However, um, it's a typical rhetoric that I see from the Green Brigade, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Now, we've got to cast our minds back to the 7th of November when families were sitting in their houses, watching TV, going about their everyday lives, and suddenly these drug-infused, total barbaric terrorists raided their, their houses, raped their women, killed the mothers and fathers, um, beheaded babies, and, you know, they, they raped people, to, you know, kids, where the bonds were actually broken. And, and Claire comes up with, we care about our life. Well, I don't care about the life of Hamas. 
I, I agree with you. I will, I'm sorry. I will shed. I will shed no tears if, if they get uh, bombed a kingdom come by Israel. But I do care about the Is innocent civilians, as I'm sure you do too, Ray. Yes, I do. And we'll talk about the Palestinians at the end of you on. Now, I live in London. I'm a Scotsman living in London. And my wife said to me yesterday, "Do you fancy going into London for a mooch round?" And for the first time, I said no because there's Palestinian marches there. Now. These marches, which are not being policed properly because there's very dangerous people within them, are de deterring people like me from going into London City and spending a coin and enjoying yeah. myself. Yeah. Now, they shout out things like jihadists, and the police are trying to say there's different meanings for that word. It's not nonsense. It is just, just what the police are saying is total nonsense, Ray, isn't it? Peter, I agree. Can I just say, do not patronise the British public. Absolutely. Absolutely. And how dare you try to say there's different meanings. Now, get back it onto the Green Brigade. I'm sorry, I have to say this as a Scotsman, but when Celtic Football Club allow Palestinian flags in hundreds and hundreds to be shown on TV and do nothing is an absolute affront. I agree with Palestine to a certain extent, but... They can only be politicised in that football club for a horrible reason. Now, that should be brought up in your station, and it never is. Why are Celtic allowing this? It's well, well, well it, it just has, Ray. You've just brought it up, and I agree with you that that is something that needs to be uh, thought about and looked into and considered properly by uh, Celtic. I know a little bit about the organisation of football games, even though I know nothing about football, because I have relatives who have been involved in that, and sometimes it is difficult to stop people bringing things in. But if there are so many of them, and flags are quite big, well, actually, maybe there is more you can do. Said is in uh, London as well, with three calls from London. Let's try and get some more uh, later in the programme from elsewhere. But Said, I think you want to talk about these protests, which you've actually been to. Yes, um, actually, I've been to protests. Um, I think they're massive. I think the last one was about 500,000 people. It was uh, full of young people or elderly. I think there were Jews, Christians, atheists, Muslims. Uh, there were people from all over the country. So, so why, why did you go? To, was this yesterday you went? Why, why did you decide yeah. to go, Said? Well, I, I, I decided to go because I think what is happening in Gaza is a massacre. They have, uh, Israelis have been uh, bombing the place. They have killed 7,700 people. Well, we don't know that. We know that's what Hamas tell us, but that we don't know if that's verified. Said, I wonder... Uh, sorry, I, wa I think you're wrong on that. Uh, these authorities have been publishing data for... No, 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 no. Said, Said, sorry, I have, to, I, have to, I have to say to you that the authorities that have been publishing that data are the health ministry or the health, health uh, authorities in Gaza, which are controlled by Hamas. It is within Hamas's, uh, it is within Hamas's interest to put propaganda out there, and they're, all I'm saying is that that might be true, but it's not verified. That's the only point. But what I'm interested in, in terms of your uh, attendance at those marches, is that I'm sure there are many, many people who are totally peaceful, but there are lots of people yeah. who weren't. And I also wonder, well, let me get to that in a second. I mean, there are lots of people who see... Uh, some of the activity that happened at these marches, and they feel very, very uncomfortable, and they feel very intimidated by it. Uh, not at all. Look, I mean, there are uh, hundreds of thousands of people. I uh, came across a group of Jews who were dressed in very orthodox clothes, who had been working for about two and a half hours to get there because they were not allowed to take public transport on Sabbath. And they were welcomed with uh, cheers and claps, and people uh, shook their hands. There were um, uh, people asking for freedom for Palestine. Again, it's a very legitimate... Uh, well, well let, let me ask you about what you just said a second ago, Said, about you yeah. said there was a relentless uh, bombing. I can't remember exactly the words that you used about the Israeli... Relentless bombing, yeah. Yeah, bombardment. I mean, that, that yeah. many would say, is happening because Hamas... Uh, did what they did on the 7th of October. The terrorists there were very clear in the fact that they wreaked absolute havoc in Israel. So perhaps Israel is reacting in a way that is uh, understandable. Yeah, but if a war crime is done to the Israelis, that doesn't give them the right to commit war crimes to the other side. Do you believe Hamas are terrorists? People, yeah. Sorry? Do you believe Hamas yes. are terrorists? Yes, yes, they committed a terrorist act. They should not have targeted any civilians. Any civilians targeted 
is is, is a war crime. So fully agree with you on that. But look, I mean, this idea that oh, why don't we do a press in on them, etc. In 1949, the Geneva Conventions were updated for the, after the crimes of the Second World War, and we all promised that uh, targeting civilians will not happen again. And some of your callers have been saying, oh, Gaza, Israel can nuke Gaza. Putin can nuke Ukraine. So should we be nice? Uh, should we be glad that Putin is not? No, we're, we're, we're not. I don't think we're glad about it. I don't think we're glad about it, Saeed. But I think we're we're simply saying that if Israel did want to uh, nuke Gaza, it could. I really hope it yeah. doesn't, uh, because that would yeah. involve the the uh, the uh, deaths of many innocent people. I'm interested yes. in your perspective, though, on the pro-Palestinian aspect and i wonder i mean there, the, you have every right to attend that protest i'm sure you were doing so in a totally peaceful and legitimate yeah. way although we do have one uh, t a tweeter charlie he says they're they're definitely not peaceful protests and never will be the police and government are allowing unlawful demonstrations but what did they expect as they have encouraged them uh, to come the, some of these people to come to this country Said, what do you make of that sentiment because it is a sentiment that quite a lot of people have have had on this program today no i think look uh, it's wrong. I mean, we have uh, we live in a democracy. I am active in politics. A lot of people there were active in politics. We well, what's your activity? Are you a member of a political party, Said? Yeah, I used to be a member of a political party. Then I was very disappointed by the way they've been handling things, especially uh, the way S.K. Starmer has been sort of... So the, the, the Labour Party, uh, okay. Yes, and I have left them, and now I'll be voting for another party which has a much clearer anti-war position because Who, I think that would, is if you don't mind me asking which party is that say yeah yeah i think the greens have a much uh, much clearer position that they want a ceasefire immediately can I literally 400 people die every day can i ask you because i would imagine people are going to be um asking me about this are you yourself yes. a muslim saeed yes yes I, I am but i'm a cultural muslim i do not follow all the tenants i uh, i uh, yeah. So what do, you, what do you say to say? I'm not asking you to, to, yeah. to, to yeah. talk on behalf of every single Muslim in this country, but there are, and I have a lot of Muslim friends, in fact one of my best friends is Muslim, there are a lot of people who, who really fear the fact that there are many people on these marches, that there yeah. are you know hundreds of thousands of people, as you're saying, um, yeah. and they fear that those people might by extension be supporting Hamas. What, what, is your, what would you say to those people? Look, I did not see a single uh, flag for Hamas in the thousands of flags there. I did not see a single Hamas uh, uh, sort of uh, slogan on any of the... Uh, the uh, but what they the did happen, Saeed, they, 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 there, there were people shouting slogans. There were, I, I saw a video of people um, mocking dead babies, for example, in those protests. I mean, this is often, they may not see what you see, but they see those aspects. Absolutely. Look, they, they, as I said, there are more than 100,000, 500,000 people. If there are idiots like that who go around carrying these uh, terrible pictures, etc., they, they're idiots and people... Would, would you go up to people who challenge... Pro would, you, would you challenge protesters who support Hamas? Yes, yes, absolutely, because I think they're completely misguided and they're actually uh, giving an excuse for this war to continue. So I would want them not to be there. I would... Uh, wish that they would just disappear because this is about a peaceful protest to force our government to make a change on their uh, on their policy and i think as a as a democrat i think everybody has that right um ian uh, just on this protest point i think that's why you've rung us you're very welcome this morning uh, what would you like to say on that yes it is good morning peter good morning uh yes about <clears throat> the double standards on the, the people's right to speak and protest okay um, what do you what do you think I want you to cast your mind back to Clapham Common after that horrible murder of Sarah Everard, what they did to those women. I want you to cast your mind back to um, the LTM protests, the 15-minute city protest in Oxford. I want you to cast your mind back about the treatment of Posey Parker, Kelly J. Keane, before we say there is freedom of speech. It seems to be some people have it and some people don't. It's like Animal Farm. Everybody's equal, but some are more equal than others. The Met Police have not covered themselves in glory, and I think you make some really, really good points there. And I think the Met Police have not covered themselves in glory. When someone is shouting jihad, and you're saying, oh, well, we need to understand that, and, you know, they might be saying something a little bit different. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, you should never say you know what people think in their head, but I'm pretty sure I know what that guy was, was, uh, was thinking. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I've, I've been at the receiving end of the police when I was protesting outside of the XL, the arms fair, over the the support of the war 
through Saudi Arabia through arms exports to the genocide in Yemen. So what, ha what happened to you? How were you protesting and what happened? Push, well, we just silently protesting and they started pushing us about. OK. For no reason? Uh, because they, cause they could. That's the reason. Because they could. So, do you, I mean, you, you, were, you, you weren't arrested at that point, were you? No. Well, so, I haven't committed any crime apart from uh, exercising my re freedom of speech. And freedom of speech is OK unless you try to use it. It's really interesting that there are so many people who I think will agree with you on that, that there are uh, people treated differently through different <coughs> causes. And I think there are a lot of people who say, you know, the, the police, in fairness, have cracked down a bit on Just Stop Oil protesters, but still they're allowed to do a lot of things. But uh, the cause itself, you think, is actually uh, really what, what the police are thinking about in all of this? Well, who, who's, who, whoever's backing them, whoever's infiltrated the uh, higher echelons of the police... I mean, look at the way, the rough way they treated Julian Assange when they grabbed him out at an embassy after the country was bought off by the IMF. I mean, a load of coppers to, to a frail chap, dragged out. Uh, they got, I've got no time for them. No time. OK, Ian, thank you very much indeed. I hope you continue to pr stand up for what you believe in. You've certainly done so by ringing us today, so thank you for that. Uh, Lisa is in Newham in London. Lisa, I believe this is the first time you've given us a ring. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, you're very welcome. What point would you like to make? Um, really, it's just on the, the barbaric treatment at the moment from um, from Israel towards Gaza. I mean, now there's nothing coming out of there at all, no no communication or anything. On the news, there's people that's just gone there for holiday from England. Doesn't matter their nationality gone there for holidays and now they're locked inside they can't get back out I, I i'm with you in that there are many many innocent civilians who are mm. su suffering really badly but at the same time israel i believe has a right to defend itself and has a right to There's... try to get hamas terrorists dead but but i i get what you're saying there and it always leads back to that which is in in all honesty it's the right and wrong two wrongs don't make a right and and it's, it just seems a lot of propaganda. But how do you deal? With, how do you deal with Hamas, Lisa? How on earth do you? Do um, you... That's, I'm not a diplomat, but I'm sure going after civilians is not getting Hamas. But, but Hamas are, are putting civilians forward. They're using them as human shields. They don't care about their own people. They're saying, stay in this hospital because our headquarters are below the hospital. If they bomb the hospital, that'll be a, a huge propaganda victory for us because we'll say there was evil Israelis bombing people in a hospital. But actually, they're trying to get to the Hamas terrorists below ground. To be honest and to be fair with you, the civilians are the ones that's actually coming off the worst off. Babies, children... And it's not, it's not a, a, a point of um, religion. It's the point of right and wrong. It's okay. right and wrong. You say Hamas, Gaza is a tiny, you can see on TV how tiny it is. It's a very small place, can, yeah. It's a very small place. But th there's, there's nowhere for them to go. So as for the point of using them for human shields, I think there's, there's nowhere for them to go except to be in that not not Hamas, like you know. I know you. I know you're not defending Hamas. There's no doubt about that, yeah. Lisa. But you, you do make a very very interesting point about the fate of those civilians, and I think a lot of people do care about them. So thank you very much indeed for your thoughts on that. Jimmy is in Birmingham. Has given me a ring. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Jimmy, what would you like to say this morning? You're very welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Peter. Um, you've done a lot of listening this morning, which I really admire you for. May I just say a few things, and can you please let me finish? Them? I'll try. I'll try, Jimmy. Thank Go ahead. You. First of all, you know, each news channel, not just yours, is constantly putting out this rhetoric that Islam is a religion of peace, right? I don't believe that to be true, because if you read the Quran and the Hadith, it is the direct commandment of the Prophet Muhammad for them to go to all these countries, set themselves up, and turn the countries into Islamic states, right? Now, that's basically what's going on here, and we are the infidel, and the Prophet Muhammad tells them have no, no dealings with them. That's why there's no integration, Peter. So I'm not talking out of my backside here. 
Now, also, my last point, thank you for letting me speak, really. The police won't engage, engage with these rioters and these protesters because they're afraid of kicking off a civil war. That is where we are right now in this country. Thank you, Peter. OK, I want to respond to those points, and maybe you can respond to me, Jimmy. Um, so, I mean, you talk about integration. There are many, many Muslims who are perfectly integrated in this country. There's some who aren't. Absolutely agree with you. The second point uh, is in, in terms of the protesters and the police. From the police's perspective, and I, I basically agree with your point on the police, and I think there are a lot more people who should have been arrested at those uh, protests who weren't arrested, um, but the police will say that essentially they want, for want of a better phrase, an easy life. If you go in and start arresting people, you're going to cause more and more problems. Do you have any sympathy with them when they make that argument, Jimmy? Where's Jimmy gone? Is he gone? Oh, Jimmy's gone. Sorry, Jimmy's gone. I thought I was. I would have very happily kept chatting to him, uh, but he, but he is gone. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, well, he made his points anyway, and I didn't interrupt him. Uh, Christine is in Dorset. Um, Christine, uh, I think you're a new caller as well. It's great to have a, a, a lots of new callers. Um, you're very welcome to the program. What point would you like to make this morning? Yes, um, these processes are always on a Saturday, and in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to have the eleventh of the eleventh. And I shall think the government should step, to, step down on them having a protest on the 11th of the 11th. My, one of my family is one of the dam busters. He's dead now. He was a front gunner. My son-in-law is a para, and he has really bad... Um, you know, he, he goes off into his own little world. And in my front garden, I've got a great big flag, and I've got my poppies. And I should be really, really upset if these... Well, I won't get to say what I usually say, because I'm a Messianic Jew. I'm a really strong Messianic Jew. Mm -hmm. If I find them that they are marching on my day, I should be really angry with the government. I really hope they don't do that. I really hope L that... Let's I'll... put it this way. Because I like, I like history, and I can remember... Oh, I can remember reading... Someone called Chamberlain when he came back from Germany and said, "Peace in our time." Yeah, yeah. And this, peace in our time, Hitler went in and took all my, my, my descendants because I'm mm. part Polish and everything else, back yeah. to a concentration camp and killed us. Now Hamas has invaded Israel and taken people from Israel and took them back into their land. It seems like it's like a, like a mirrored I image, you know, peace in our time. Oh, peace in our time. Yes, let's go and invade them and take all their, you know, and, and kill them off. Christine, you make some really good points. Um, I, I really hope that those protests do not happen on the 11th. I, I'm wearing my poppy right now. I have uh, my uh, grandfather's brother, who would have been my great uncle had he lived, uh, yeah. was, he was an RAF navigator and he oh. died in the Second World War. Yeah. And uh, you have a very strong connection to the armed services, and I want to thank your son-in-law yeah. and, and indeed uh, remember the legacy of the dam buster you mentioned oh, there. My he, goodness, he was br he was brilliant. He was a most lovely person. He used to tell lovely stories about the dam busters. But well, well, both. I, I just feel if they're going to dis put us in a position where if my son-in-law went up to London and saw that, I think. Mm -hmm. he'd, you know, you do something to show It would them. have a, a bad effect on him. Well, listen, the 11th, <laughs> as you, the 11th, as you say, is a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, and I will be on air and we will be reflecting those Remembrance events, both on the Saturday and indeed on Remembrance Sunday as well, because we always remember the people who let us be free and fought so hard, including your relatives. Uh, so thank you very, very much indeed, Christine. I know that was your first call. Please don't make it your last. Jimmy is back. Jimmy, you went away. Sorry, Peter, we got cut off there. That's all right, no problem. Well, listen, I wanted to make two points. I listened to you, and I know you'll listen to me, and I just wanted to make two quick points uh, uh, in, in reply to what you had said a, a couple of minutes ago. One was about integration, and I think that uh, some Muslims don't integrate, that is true. Some people of all sorts of communities don't integrate, but I think there are a lot of Muslims who do integrate and actually play a very big role and a very important role in our society. So maybe I'll ask you to respond to that in a second, but the, se the other point you made about protest and the protesters and the Metropolitan Police, I think it's a really interesting one. Um, they, they, they essentially want an easy life. Their, their view is, and I'm not defending it, and I agree basically with what you said but what the metal problem police say is, is we go in and start arresting loads of people it'll cause more and more and more problems and get violent 
and I think that that is a, a bit of a cop out to be frank but I wonder what you make just of those two points well, I hope you're right, because, <laughs> I mean, civil war and mass unrest is the last thing I want to see. No, we don't want any of that, Jimmy, do we? No, definitely not, but I fear it may come. And, um, you know, the, the question of integration is a weird one, because I find with them, a lot of them are quite friendly people, but they integrate only to a point. You know, and like I say, you have to refer to the Islamic texts okay. to really know where they're at and where they're coming from. Okay. And people, you know, in the media are just not doing that. Well, but Jimmy, I think I think there are a lot of Muslims. I mean, I, I don't know if I don't even know if I am a Christian. I mean, I'm basically agnostic. I don't go to church. I go to church every now and again. My parents have a brilliant uh, local church, which they're at at the moment. They're not watching this. But I mean, I suppose the question is, what is a Christian? What is a Muslim? I mean, there, I, one of my best mates is someone who comes from quite a strong Muslim family. Um, she doesn't actually really believe very much of it. Um, she does. She she drinks, for example. She doesn't. She eats pork. She is married to um, a white Christian man. Um, and I wonder, you know, she is someone who is clearly integrated about as much as she can. Uh, but that's that's one example. There are many many other examples of people who haven't. Um, so I suppose the question is, can you can you really say that that all Muslims are the same because they're not? Well, most of them are because I speak to many many of them, and they all have this idea that Britain will become Islamic, Germany, Denmark, every, France, everywhere else they are, and that, that they are working here and there and everywhere to make these countries Islamic, right? Well, I, I certainly hope they don't, Jimmy. Um, I hope that, that our British values and all that we hold dear continues. So, Jimmy, thanks for your thoughts on that.